Hi, everybody. This is Virginia Milner coming to you again with another tutorial for our younger set. We are going to make a nice autumn bracelet. And there went my phone. We're going to make a nice autumn uh, bracelet just in time for fall with some really nice fall colors. It's very easy to make and it's really, really nice when you get finished with it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started because this is going to be a nice piece. The only things that you'll need are your regular tools, your round nose cutters, your square nose cutters, and your uh, or pliers, round nose pliers, square nose pliers, and your cutters. You'll need some 20 gauge wire and um, just a selection of, we're using wooden beads, just a selection of colorful wooden beads in order to make this. You're also going to need some jump rings and some little end clips for uh, to finish it off um, and a lobster clasp. And I'll show you all of that when we get down here to where we're going to make the necklace. And the last thing that we're going to need is some cord in order to make the drop for you your necklace. So let's go ahead and get started so that we can have a nice necklace. All right. So I've got um, all my little beads lined up here and I've got my cord and what you're going to need is about three feet of, of cord. Um, it depends on how long you want your necklace to be. I've got about three feet of cord here and what I'm going to do is cut that in half. Just cut it in half with my, with my cutters. And then I'm going to put that to the side. That, now, the other things that I was telling you about, uh, we'll get to in a minute. The first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and make the little bar for our, uh, to put our beads on. So what I wanna do is take my round nose pliers and just grab the end, the very tip of my wire and make a small loop. So I've got the tip of my pliers just a little ways away from the tip of my pliers, grasping the tip of my wire. I don't want any of my wires sticking out from between the um, pliers. And I'm just gonna make a small loop. So I'm just going to hold, I, I like to put my finger just under my pliers, just to hold it in place. And then put my thumb on the wire and I'm gonna rotate my pliers until I have a loop. So I rotate a little bit then open the pliers and rotate them back, clamp back down on the wire, rotate again, open, rotate back, clamp back down. And I keep doing that until I have a loop. So now I have a loop in my wire, but I wanna keep going because I wanna make it a little more decorative. So what I'm going to do is just keep rotating until I have just a little spiral. And that's what my cord is going to go through. So I have a little spiral there and I'm going to put my cord through like that to hold my beads in place. So now that I've got my little spiral done, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting my beads on. But first, I wanna do a little centerpiece. I was just gonna put beads on it, but I think I'm gonna make a little dangle to go on my wire as well. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I don't need this entire piece of wire, what I have here is about 10 inches of wire, and all I really need is about, uh, five or six. So I'm going to cut off about two inches of wire. Just cut off about two inches on the end. And I'm gonna make another one of those little loops. So I'm gonna grab the tip of my wire with the, the tip of my pliers. I'm gonna go down about a quarter of an inch away from the tip. And I'm going to make a loop, just like we did the first time, except that I'm gonna stop when I have one little loop. Then I'm going to take my pliers and I'm gonna go right into the loop 
And I'm gonna bend that loop back just like that. So it looks like a little lollipop. And then I'm going to flatten a little bit. So now this is what I have. I just made a head pin, what we can call a head pin. And the reason I needed that is because I'm going to go ahead and string on one of these round beads. And I want to make sure that it stays in place. I'm going to put that on. And I want my loop to be big enough so that it doesn't slide back through the little hole in my bead. Put that on and just flatten out my little loop like so. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my next bead on that I choose. And I'm using this pretty painted wooden bead that you'll all get in your kits. You'll all have a painted wooden bead. It'll either be oval or round, or some of them are rectangle, but they'll be really nice. And I'm going to put my other bead on. Oops. Put my other bead on top. And there we go. And I have enough actually that I can make this a little bit bigger, but it doesn't need to be bigger. So now I'm going to make a loop so that I can slide it on my cord. So what I wanna do for that is just cut this down to about an inch, about three quarters to an inch. It doesn't need to be very long or very big. I'm gonna cut that down. And I'm gonna grab my pliers. I'm gonna sl slide my a wire down about a third of the way down my pliers now so I can get a, a slightly larger loop and I'm going to make another loop. I'm going to rotate until I have a nice loop right there on top of my bead. And now I'm going to put that to the side. Now it's time for me to start putting on my beads on my wire. I don't know why I picked that up. So I've got my beads all worked out. These are the way I want the colors to go. So I'm just going to start stringing them on my wire. One bead at a time. Okay, I've got this nice red one and a purple one and I've got a yellow one. I'm using all nice fall tuned colors. Now, the interesting part of wooden beads is, especially when they're painted, is when they're drilled, sometimes if they are painted, um, the paint gets caught in the holes or it's not drilled as nice and neat as you might like. And just take your wire and poke through the wood to get to the other side. So now I'm gonna put on one of my nice turquoise and then orange. And I have these two nice square black beads. I'm gonna put those on. Yeah. Now, here's where I want this to go. So I'm gonna put on one of my black beads instead of both. And I'm gonna put my dangle bead on. So that's gonna dangle right there in the middle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of my beads on my other black bead, orange, turquoise, and my two little natural colored beads, my yellow, purple, and red. And those of you who get kits, you'll have all different colored beads and you can put these on any way you like. It does not have to be exactly the way I'm doing them, and you're all not going to have the same color beads anyway, so it's going to be a little different. And there is the, the bottom part of my necklace, and see how that just threads right in between those two beads there, and then dangles down. Neat, huh? I like it. See, I told you you weren't going to need all of this wire. So now I'm just going to have to cut that off. And what I'm going to do is give myself a good inch of wire because I want to make another loop on the other side that's like this one, a nice double loop. 
So I'm gonna give myself, oh, let's give myself about an inch and a quarter. And I can measure that. If you have a ruler, that would be a good idea to just give it a little bit of measurement. And if you can just guess at it, that's fine too. If you have a ruler, that would be great. That's one thing I didn't say that you needed, but it might be a good idea to have one. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. Snip that off. Oh, look at all that wire I have left. Darn it. And I'm gonna make another loop just like I did on the other side. And my loop is going, see how this is curved? We want it to have a little bit of a curve up. And you can do that later. It doesn't have to be curved right now. You can curve it the way you want it later. So when I make my loop, I want my loop to go in the same direction of the curve. So I'm gonna grab my pliers again, go down almost to the tip of my pliers and grab the tip of my wire, make sure nothing's sticking out of the back from in between the pliers. And I'm going to make a loop just like I did the first time. And then I'm gonna to continue to loop it until I have a little spiral. And just keep going. And this is very free form, so it doesn't have to look exactly like the other one. And once I have my spiral, get it as close to the beads as I can, then I'm gonna take my little flat pliers and I'm gonna squeeze those little loops together like that. So this is what I have, nice little spiral. And that's where these are gonna go. See that, neat. Okay, so this is what I have. This is the bottom of my necklace. And let's move on to put on our cord. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of my cords. Remember we cut it in two. And I'm gonna slide that in one of my loops and bring it up till the ends meet, just like so. Then I'm gonna go down here near my little um, loop and I'm gonna just put a knot in it. Just put a little knot in the bottom. I just like it to, it's the, just a little decorative and it also holds everything into nice place. So just wrap it around my finger and then po poke both of my tail ends through the loop like that and just pull my knot tight. So there we go, just like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna slide the tail end of my cord through my loop. Pull it up until the ends meet are the same length, like that. I'm gonna go down here to where the wire loop is and make a knot. I'm gonna wrap it around my finger and then put the ends of my cord through. And you can do it like that, or you can actually take the ends, the very end, and you can just slide it through the loop and then pull it, pull the, knit, not, uh, the knot nice and snug. There we go. So there is the cord for my necklace. So now what I'm going to do is finish it off. So that's where these little end pieces come in. So I'm going to take the two cords of my necklace, make sure the ends are the same length. And if they're not, I'm gonna take my cutters and I'm gonna snip off the long end so that it's the same size as the other one. Let me just check, make sure it's nice and neat. And then I'm gonna grab this little end piece that you'll all have in your kits. It's got two little sides. 
and a loop on the end. And I'm gonna take both ends of my cord. And I'm gonna slide them in between the two side pieces. I'm gonna make sure that's as even as possible. Slide them in between the two ends. I'm gonna bring this down a little closer. So that goes in between these two little ends like that. And then I'm going to take my pliers and I'm gonna squeeze these little sides together. So I'm gonna squeeze, squeeze them together, make sure that my cord is right there in between the two sides. And I'm gonna squeeze it up together a little bit. And what I'm going to do is push one of the ends, one of the sides down. See how it's caught in there? Nice and neat. So I'm gonna close one of the sides down with my pliers like that. And then I'm gonna close the other side down over that first side. Just squeeze it down until my cord is enveloped in between those little sides. See, nice and neat. Then I'm gonna to go to the other side and do the same thing. I'm gonna check, make sure the ends are the same length. And I just grab it down here at the knot and then slide up to the end of my cord. And again, I have one that's a little longer than the other and that's normal because when you make a knot, sometimes one, end, one tail ends up longer than the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip off that long cord, that long side until they're both the same. Then I'm gonna grab my little end piece and slide those two cords in between the little end pieces, just like I did the first time. Make sure that the ends aren't over your little opening. You wanna make sure that little round, uh, that little round loop is nice and free and clear of any cords. And I'm gonna squeeze both of those sides together just a bit like that. And then I'm gonna squeeze one down over both of the cords. And again, make sure your cords are inside the little um, two side pieces and not down over your loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze one side down over the cords like so. And then the other side that's left, I'm gonna squeeze that down over the first side. Nice and flat. And there we have it, nice and neat. And so now what I'm going to do is grab one of my jump rings. And the proper way I need to open my, my jump rings up so I can slide it in one of my loops. So the proper way to open my jump ring is to take my pliers and put it on one side of the opening that's right here. And then I can take my other pair of pliers and I can put that on the other side and give it a twist just to open that up. So now I have an open jump ring and I can slide that in one of the loops on one of the sides of my cord, just like that. And then I'm gonna close that up. I can just squeeze that together, make sure that these ends are, not, are resting against each other and not open at all. So I'm just gonna take my pliers and wiggle it until that's nice and closed and there aren't any openings like that. And then I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna open my jump ring. And the second way that you can open a jump ring is to put one pair of pliers on one side of the opening, which is right here. And then I can take my thumb and I can push down on the other side. See, these are very strong. Wow, these are some nice strong jump rings. 
can't do it that way. So I'm going to have to use my pliers, my other pair of pliers, and give it a twist. And now it's open. Yay. I'm going to use that to thread on the other loop on the other side. And I'm going to add my lobster clasp. So I've got my jump ring through the one loop. And then I'm putting my lobster clasp also on the jump ring, like so. And now I'm going to close it up. Squeeze it together. Check and make sure it's nice and closed. I see a little bit of an opening. So let's just wiggle that into place until it's nice and closed. And there aren't any openings. Here we go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our necklace. There we go. We've got a nice bar necklace. Take my lobster clasp, fasten it, and we are good to go. Here it is. Neat, huh? Easy as can be. And you have a nice necklace that you can wear anywhere. Those of you who get kids will, of course, get all of the beads. You'll get some cord. They're all different colors. So you, you'll get some cord. You'll have a lobster clasp. You'll have your jump rings. And you'll have your little end pieces. And what I did was give you an extra end piece. Uh, because sometimes these can be a little tricky to work. And if you um, bend it too much, it, it might get stuck. And then you can just take that one off and grab your third one that I gave you and use it. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of an extra so you would have something to work with. So that is our piece for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to show it to you on our little um, display. Most of you have probably already seen the display at the library, but I wanted to make sure that you could see a different version, just slightly different. And this is the piece that we've got. Isn't that neat? I like it. And it's very indicative of lovely fall colors. And you can pretty much wear that anyway, anywhere. You've got all kinds of different colors of cord all kinds of different colors of bead. Some of the cord is brown, some of it is white, some of it is blue and green, and it just depends on what kit you get. So you should have a lot of fun with this one. It's very, very easy to make as I have shown you, and I hope that you'll post pictures. Please do. I love to see the pictures of, of the pieces that you make, and if you'll send it to me at jewelrygen20 at gmail.com. That's J-E-W-E-L-R-Y-G-I-N-2-0 at gmail.com or post it on the library Facebook page. That's decab library slash, no, that's facebook.com slash decab library. Now, if you would rather send it to me at jewelrygen20 at gmail.com, that's J-E-W-E-L-R-Y-G-I-N-2-0 at gmail.com, I can post it on the Facebook page for you. It's up to you, but I just love to see what you do. So if you would do me the honor of sending me your pictures, I would love to hear from you, and I would love to hear how you liked or even didn't like this piece and what you did or didn't like about it or and what you did or didn't like about the video. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, and I will answer them if I can. Okay? Until next time, I hope to see you again, and I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, until next time, have a great week. A great weekend, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.